And now on Artworks, we're going to learn about an intriguing and curious instrument. Now I'm talking about the theremin, and I say intriguing because in order to play it, you don't actually touch it. I'm joined by theremin player and composer Miles Brown. Miles, hello. Hi. Now, the theremin to me has always seemed like a little bit of sorcery. When people ask you, how do you explain what is a theremin? A theremin is the world's oldest electronic instrument. It was invented 100 years ago, give or take, and it's the only instrument in the world that is played without being touched. So you move your hands in the air near it, and it's an electrical capacitance relationship with your body. And as you move closer and further away from the aerials, it is changing the, the electromagnetic relationship. It's sort of like with an old fashioned television, if you, you know, you're sitting in the wrong spot in the room and it goes out of tune and you, you know, it's sort of that relationship. I want to take things right back because you've been playing the theremin for over a couple of decades now. Tell me what attracted you to this instrument? My father was an electrical engineer and I was getting into synth music and he said to me, the synth is cool but the theremin came first and it sounds like a sort of disembodied voice and I was like, what, what the hell is that? So we got on the internet and looked it up and uh, there was one mp3 of the theremin on the internet back in 1995. I was just like, what, this is incredible, like I have to get involved. So did you actually play other instruments before learning the theremin? Yeah, I was a, a rock and roll bass player before playing the theremin. Okay. <laughs> Originally, because uh, my dad and I built my first theremin together and I was playing in a rock band, so I just had a little homemade theremin that I just went woo 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 with while we were doing our weird grunge music. How do audiences respond when you pull this out at gigs? In a nightclub context, people can really enjoy the psychedelic nature of it. You know, the interface and the fact that you're not touching it and the magical side of it generally grabs people's attention. How do people dance to uh, the theremin? <laughs> well, I think the theremin's role in dance music is sort of like a soulful singer uh, in, in, you know, vocal house or something. So it's sort of, you have, you have techno and then you have this soaring sort of operatic voice over the top. It's said that the theremin is the hardest instrument in the world to play. What are your thoughts on that? I'm going to say yes, because I'm a theremin player. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's, it's very hard. There's no frets, there's no keyboard. Also where your body is makes it change. So if you lean forward, all the notes get closer together. If you lean away, they get further apart. So you're constantly in this symbiotic relationship with the electromagnetic fields. And that means you have to stand very still and you have to learn how to almost be a meditative state. But there's something about it where it's almost quite magical when I see people playing it. And with the use of the hands, does it feel like you're casting a spell, almost. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's got a Harry Potter vibe to it and it's <laughs> like learning to, to do magic. It's similar, like you move your hands in the air and if you do it wrong, the spell doesn't work. I, I think there's definitely a, an element to it that is like that. And I think people might not know that actually they are quite familiar with the sound of the theremin. What are some famous works of music or compositions where the theremin is featured? Uh, the Midsummer Murders theme song has the theremin. So you're currently experimenting with the theremin in a number of different ways. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I like to try to um, take the theremin into new genres or new creative combinations a lot. It's an instrument that is um, not really played that much in the world and it's, it's still very young, it's only 100 years old. So mm. I imagine the theremin could play the role of any kind of vocal instrumental soundtrack thing. It'd be, it's great in film music, it's wonderful in uh, experimental music. And then it's also funny to put it into genres that it doesn't really belong in. And it's funny to get up and play with a metal band and see whether an audience there is gonna be open to it. Shall we give this a shot? Yes. Excellent. So you've got two aerials. Mm. This one on the left is for your volume. Mm -hmm. And then the higher up in the air that you raise your hand, it will get louder. Mm -hmm. On this side is for pitch. So the closer to the aerial is the higher notes and back to your shoulder is low notes. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. What? Sorcery. <laughs> yep. 
Oh my gosh, okay, all and right. That hand is your pitch, so up there is going to be high notes. And then that's it. Absolutely. What? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Beautiful. <laughs> I feel like I'm casting spells. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fabulous. I think you've started me on something new. <laughs> my neighbours are going to hate me, but I don't care. I don't care. They will, they will. Miles Brown, I could keep playing this all day, but Lovely. I think we should see a professional do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming into Artworks. Can you show me how it's done? Okay, sure. All right, let me give you room. <laughs>